Hi everyone, I'm Valerie Leonard, founder of Everthrive Financial Group. Welcome to the April edition of Five Things Investors Need to Know this month. There's a lot to cover this month, so let's jump straight in. First, let's start off with some positive news in the equity markets. Recent stock market performance has broadened out so far this year, creating some potential opportunities in areas of the market that were lagging. And as you've heard me discuss before, 2023 was all about the Magnificent Seven, or more specifically, the top seven stocks in the S&P 500, which were responsible for most of the positive gains last year, as you can see in this chart. It's crazy to think that NVIDIA was up 239% or Meta was up 194%. These ret returns are insane. Um, and if there's one thing that I have learned in my investment career, it's what goes up must eventually come down. So some of the most popular indexes are highly concentrated with massive exposure to just a handful of companies, which can increase the risk of a sudden slide. So diversification is becoming much more important, but we are seeing opportunities for possible growth in other areas like maybe financials, energy, materials, just to name a few. Second, we're watching consumer health and employment data carefully. On the surface, everything looks positive. In 2023, we saw government data indicate that 2.7 million people were added to the U.S. payrolls and the unemployment rate hit a 54-year low at 3.4% in January of last year, with just a slight uptick to about 3.7% by December. Now, remember that employment, um, really, when you're looking at the rates, that doesn't factor in workers who have uh, basically given up looking for a job. It doesn't factor in freelancers or gig workers who may have lost clients or maybe just otherwise um, are working less. And it doesn't factor in people whose hours may have been cut back from full time to part time. There has been a 41% increase in online gig and freelance work if you're going all the way back to 2016 through the end of 2023. And that means that larger numbers of people are not reflected in the unemployment rates. Now, while monthly job reports may still provide directional information, there are some expectations that the job market will cool this year. So we will be watching consumer health very closely. Third, for the first time in years, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell confirmed that they are poised to basically start lowering interest rates this year. But inflation is still persistent, and the Fed is also closely watching the labor market. Chairman Powell said that they needed more data before they would initiate rate cuts, which means that the Fed could potentially reverse course on the comments that they've made. But separately, if you look at his comments, the bond market may potentially rally, which may mean that there's opportunities in the bond market for the first time in a really long time. Fourth, on the global front, we expect to see some additional recovery and even more demand in 2024. One simple but effective barometer for the global market, don't laugh at me here, is the so-called cardboard box index. And when global demand for cardboard boxes and other packing materials go up, it's a sign that both manufacturing and consumer demand are potentially up. So cardboard producers increased prices within the last quarter, which signals potential demand. And beyond that, there are some pockets of new opportunity potentially in global markets. The International Monetary Fund predicts that as a whole, the global economy will slow slightly in 2024. But when you separate out, separate out countries and you look at certain pockets of the world, it's actually a different story. So um, we, th we see things um, you know, being pretty strong in uh, Japan and Europe, for instance. Fifth, the presidential race is definitely still top of mind for most of my clients. And my take is that it's the Federal Reserve decisions that are probably going to guide the year, not so much the election itself. Here's a few facts just that uh, you may find helpful. According to Morgan Stanley, 83% of election years ended with positive S&P 500 performance. And the four years that dipped were due to extraordinary circumstances like the 2008 market crash, the impacts of 9-11 in 2001. Um, and this chart shows eight decades of returns. 
And it shows that the median S&P 500 return is 10.7% in a full election year. Of course, this um, you know, isn't guaranteed, past doesn't always predict what's going to happen in the future, but it's important to note that um, you know, we, we shouldn't make sudden or emotional decisions due to election fears. If this information has been helpful to you, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or look Everthrive Financial Group up on social media. We covered a lot today and we will be back in just a few short weeks with another update to keep you informed. Thank you so much again for watching and we will see you soon.